Hi guys, thanks for joining me again. It's Steve on the Goober Brew. You know, this is a CNC router cutter and it cuts wood, plastic, and light metals, foam. It's a very fun machine and it allows us to be very creative with making projects. So let's talk about it some more. Let's get started. You know if you've watched any of my videos you know that I use a CNC router here in the shop and I've done some projects for the show with the machine and since then I've gotten some interest from some of you viewers that would like to see more about the CNC router, learn more about it, perhaps um, because you would like to purchase or make one of your own. Well, the good news is I've done both. I've purchased one and I've made my own. I've made a design that was modeled after um, a gentleman made one on the CNC zone called the gyro router. And with this machine, I just have a Sears router with a um, quarter inch collet on it. And I'm able to cut wood, plastic, and light metals, even though I think metal is a bit much for it, plexiglass and foam. And there probably are other materials as well that are soft that would work fine too. But those are the materials I've tried so far. I'm just a hobbyist. I do make a few products for profit and I put them on my store, such as the Raspberry Pi. And if you want to take a look at this video here, you'll see the Raspberry Pi case that we make as well as a, a few professional products that we've done in the past. Now this is for a flight box for RC planes and it's made to hold a 12 volt battery and bring the power up through this panel. Now this, this box was entirely made with um, my CNC machine and every detail has been thought out right down to the breather holes for the battery and the tool hold holders here you can see um, there's even like a little drawer here and I've produced quite a few of these and there's quite a few of these out there um, around the planet because I've shipped these um, quite a few places so there's the um, electric flight box I call it and uh, I had a little company name called the easy flight but uh, I don't go by that anymore. So that's one example that um, I've done. Another thing is house signs. And if you look at this, this is uh, just like a, a sample house sign. It's not finished yet. It still has the mask on there and it needs to be painted. But you can get an idea of the quality. And if you look down at the cuts, perhaps you can see that it's a, a V cut and it slopes down on the side, and that's done with a V cutter, a beveled tool. This is an example of some grapes that I did, um, just messing around, and you can see that uh, they protrude off the top of the board um, about three eighths in some places. And this is considered two and a half D. Um, full 3D would be, uh, you know, a physical, like bust of a man or something like that. But this sticks up off, so it has uh, three access dimensions. This could be actually used um, for trim boards, and uh, you know, cut into 45s to go around a door or windowsill. So this is an example of that that I made. Um, let's see what else we have. This um, particular piece was made, again, it's a 2.5D, and I just took the drawing off the internet. A uh, gentleman was sharing his work. This um, picture was actually um, bubbled up to look 2.5D, and, and you can see how it has contours and it's very nice. And this is another example of something that could be done over a fireplace mantle perhaps with fine woodworking or with foam. A lot of professional signs 
that you see outside, even for dentists or professional buildings, are actually done with foam. It's a high-density sign foam that's used, and it's painted and protected with um, some sort of material that um, makes it weather resistant and very strong, but light at the same time. And they can actually make these signs look concrete, but they're not, they're just uh, foam. This is just an example of a, the, the drawer pull that uh, before it had been finished, and it's just in a light plywood. You can see here, this is this before it was finished. This piece is an example of the construction of the side of this, actually. And you can see in detail how all the pieces are put together. You can see that it's all slotted and grouped. And well thought out. And I designed this piece myself, the whole box. In fact, I did uh, several different um, designs. And I, sell, I still sell these electric flight boxes today. And here's one more I have. This is just a, a sign that was done in rough cedar. You can see that it's quite rough. And um, it's just a simple sign that was done with a V-bit. But it looks uh, very nice, and I haven't finished this either. Um, so these are just a few examples. I just went around the shop real quick here and, and picked out a few pieces that i seen laying around. I've done many more. If you watched my video of the acrylic Christmas tree, and I'll put a link up here, I did that one on the show where I cut into a acrylic plastic, like a plexiglass. And um, so there's a, a ton of projects that you can make if you have a CNC machine. So I understand those that want to look into it further. If you've ever watched any videos of guys that have a, a CNC driven laser, those are nice too and you know the lasers have their their good points and their bad points as well as a CNC router which actually uses a cutting tool so um, I can't really sp I speak for the lasers I would like to get one at some point and I can't speak for the metal working lathes and metal uh, milling machines if you will but uh, they all work on the same principle as my CNC wood router. And like I said, I have built one, and I'll show you the pieces of that. So this is class one of CNC router 101. That's what I'm going to call it. And it's just a basic overview of the CAD CAM process. I'm going to start you out. We're going to talk about design. Then we're going to talk about the computer aspect of it, because you have the CAD, then you have the CAM. The computer aspect of it is things like drawing the actual shapes and then um, telling, the com uh, telling the computer how you'd like the shape cut out as far as what bits to use and what kind of material you'll be using. And then you produce something called G-code and that's saved to the computer. And then there'll be things like the physical machine, how it works mechanically as well as electrically how it interfaces with a computer, how it reads the files, and how it cuts the part, and how it, how it moves. And then um, there'll be some general ideas and um, demonstrations about using the machine itself, such as materials, the cutters, the, um, the unique characteristics of different kinds of materials. So I'm not going to make this a really involved uh, class track, but I will cover um, everything that I can possibly think of in it so it will probably span three or four maybe even five different weeks and I'll throw them in maybe one one a week so okay so when I was starting to think about what I was going to talk about through these CNC router classes I had to come up with some kind of a, a detailed list of how I was going to present it to you and I I think that the first thing to discuss is design you know, it gets overlooked a lot, but uh, really, when you're making something on a CNC, if it be a laser or a router or a milling machine, you have to have a solid idea in your head of what you're making. And not only do you have to have a solid idea of what you're making, but you have to know the details. 
Um, you have to know how it goes together, at least vaguely in your head, and about how big you want it to be and what purpose it will serve. I wanted to show you, I actually made a guitar and I've been saving this for um, another show at some point, maybe during the summer. This uh, guitar was uh, based on a, on a Fender 57 Stratocaster, and this was made entirely with just rough cut pine. Um, this is as detailed as I could get it to a real um, Stratocaster Fender. Um, and now this is just for personal use. I didn't copy this to sell it or anything like that. So um, I just wanted you to know that. But uh, this entire guitar was made on the the um, CNC router in um, two pieces with construction pine. Now I do have some wood back there that I've been saving. Um, have some nice pieces of ash. There's maple back there. So I was going to make a, nut, a really nice one coming up, but I, like I said, I'm saving that for another show. But what I was trying to get at is I, that had to be a solid idea. I, I had to know that I wanted to make a Stratocaster. I wanted it to be a 57. Uh, you know, And then I went about looking for the design dimensions. And this is very important that you have a, like I said, at least a vague of an understanding of how big and what size you'd like it to be. And it will take progressive steps until that, you know, you get to the final product. Now, something I wanted to talk about, these are just renderings that the computer did. But you can see that all the dimensions for the pockets and everything have been all figured out already. But what I'm trying to get across to you is you have to have a crystal clear idea. Um, same thing with this cabinet that I made. Um, now, your drawing skills will not depend, luckily, on your art ability. If my drawing skills had to depend solely on my art ability, I wouldn't have been able to do it because I can't even draw a decent stick man. But I can draw on the computer using mathematics. Now, using the computer, the CAD part about it, is drawing with mathematics, and you can think of it that way. It's actually called vector-based art, and what that means is, if you have a line that's drawn from point A to point B, instead of just saying, okay, here's a pixel, uh, come over 10 pixels or whatever, um, it's saying, you know, uh, Z equals 1 to 1,000, stretch the line. It's done mathematically. That way, if you wanted to, say, make that line smaller or larger, you would just increase the numbers. If you wanted it to be 200%, let's just say, and you had a line from 0 to 100, you would make it 0 to 200, which would give you 200%, or 200 to 400%, that sort of thing. So vector-based drawings is what CAD is based on, and not bitmaps. Bitmaps are for um, like Photoshop programs, or pictures that we take with our digital camera, or even things that we scan on our flatbed scanner. Th those are all examples of bitmap, and that's not what we're using. Even though our pictures might look um, just like a picture, it's not. It's done mathematically, so that's very important to understand. So, um, for this track, what I've decided to make, and I've never made one before, is a, a gaming cabinet, if you will. And for those that do watch my videos, I told you I'd be doing a, um, something special with a Raspberry Pi. Well, I've decided to turn my Raspberry Pi into a gaming cabinet. I'm thinking <clears throat> I would like it to be tabletop size, but still have the same look and feel of a regular gaming cabinet. Maybe running some form of Pac-Man or some other main type um, application on it. So that's going to be the project for this CNC track 
is a ga gaming cabinet, um, probably mod made out of MDF, and possibly some light plywood, maybe for the back, that sort of thing. So that's where we're going to go with this, and that's why I'm calling this first one an overview as well as telling you my design. And now the next thing I need to do is get a pencil and start just roughly drawing it out how I want it to look and maybe get some ideas on the internet as well. And when we come back next week or whenever this next um, CNC router um, class picks back up on number two, I will have something sketched out on a napkin or something and we'll go over it and start transferring that to the computer. And that's when the real artistry starts because the computer can make everything look nice and smooth and and proportionate and that's uh, and then it also handles the 3D um, part of it too and I'll explain the programs that we use and that sort of thing. Okay guys this is number one of the CNC router for 101 CAD CAM the basics so look forward to number two don't forget to don't forget to subscribe and uh, give us a comment we'll see you next time thanks for watching Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.